So why do parents hate video games? Uh, I'm going to talk about the movement from public to private. So when I was growing up, consoles and computers were fairly expensive. So we usually only had one that was shared with the whole family. So technology in the home was purchased to be shared with everyone. What this meant was that every game we played was public. Our parents may not have known all aspects of the game, but they would at least be able to talk to us if we got upset because of the game. There was a built in assumption that what we did with computers or game consoles was public. So there was a strong level of accountability for our digital actions. Now, over time, laptops were introduced and they became smaller and more affordable. And suddenly our actions are online were assumed to be private. No one should know about them except us. So this expectation of privacy from your own family only grew with the arrival of smartphones and laptops behind closed bedroom doors. Because I mean, this was another thing that was widely searched It's like, why? Why do they invade my privacy? Why do they check my phone? Um, that was a big area of concern, too. So now you may um, have heard the quote already, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And that means that everyone in your life counts. This is from the renowned businessman and speaker Jim Rohn. Well, it turns out that this is backed by the research as well. So research from UC San Diego and Harvard Medical School revealed how even friends of friends can impact our behaviors. So if you were friends of a smoker, you were 61% more likely to be a smoker yourself. If a friend of a friend smokes, then you were 29% more likely to be a smoker. Now, what about if a friend of a friend of a friend smoked, then you were still 11% more likely to be a smoker, even if you had never met this person before. Now, researchers also um, found similar patterns in obesity. And on a positive note, they also found it with happiness as well. So if you're around more happy people, you're much more likely to be happy. The network of your peers has a direct impact on your behavior. It, it just makes sense. It will rub off on you even a little, even if you, you've never met them, because I mean, your peers are influenced uh, by others. Now, of course, as, as parents, we can get anxious when we see our children playing a lot of video games because we don't know who you are, who you're hanging out with. You know, are, are they people who lift you up and they challenge you to reach even higher? Or are they people who take you down and they make you feel sad? You know, parents are not hating on games per se, but if you're spending more time on Roblox than you are with your family, then we're not going to feel good about it. So more anonymous games also, and this is important, it means more risky behaviors. And the reason for this is because you feel more disconnected from the consequences of your actions. So what happens when others feel that they can do whatever they want without consequences? They end up saying things that they to other people that they would never dare to say in person. Like, why do people engage in bullying at all? Well, for the bully, tearing others down means that they can borrow your status and that they can feel better 
about their own possibly self-limited self-esteem, right? Like maybe they don't feel that great about themselves. And so when they bully another person, they, they borrow their status. So they, they reach a higher status and they, they feel better about their own situation. So this is not often about you. <laughs> it, they're not actually uh, often criticizing you. They're actually criticizing themselves. So I, I just want to be clear, like if you or anybody who's watching this is experiencing bullying, I'm here to say that you are not what others say about you online. You are valued, even if you don't think that right now. If you don't have anyone you feel that you can speak to right now, there are people who love and care about you and they want to help. Youthline has a teen to teen service that you can text 839-863. So these are other youths that you can speak to. There's also a crisis text line at 741741 in the United States. And if you're in Canada, you can text 686868. This is the crisis text line. Now, going back to stepping back a little bit to parents, you know, honestly, we we genuinely want to learn more about your friends and your friends parents. Uh, and the reason for this is it provides accountability. If something bad happens online, it gives another parent that we can reach out to so that there are potential consequences for what happens online. So the more time that we spend with people that we can like meet in person, the more accountable they'll be for their actions online. Yeah, and I know like, like, oh, who wants their parents like knowing this stuff? You're right, like it's normal to seek independence and privacy as we get older. Uh, when you share with your parents about how you handled a situation online, well, you're showing that you're already being responsible on your own. So it's really about figuring out where you are today. Um, and if you have a habit already, then great. But if you don't, like, if we develop a habit of talking about who we connect with online, and this, this helps when this will help us create a support network that will be really beneficial when something bad does happen. The key is we the parents we're on your team, even though it may not seem that way all the time, like even though sometimes we're frustrated, uh, we are still your biggest champions, right? And we're here for you no matter what.